Hi, this is Cindy Cochran. Welcome to the archives of The Cindy Cochran Show. Remember, I'm live Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 11, right here on IRLoneStar.com. You can be a part of the show by calling 936-647-3776. Also, please visit my Facebook page, The Cindy Cochran Show. Enjoy. Good morning, everybody. You're listening to The Cindy Cochran Show, and this isn't a recording. It's real live reality radio, and I'm back. Uh, I was, wasn't here yesterday. I uh, was meant to be here yesterday, but uh, because of climate change, I wasn't here. Um, I was in Lubbock, and boy, did that climate change. It was amazing. I had... I lived with ice longer than I ever, ever had to before. And I just, you walk outside and everything you walk on is ice. Um, they were hit really hard by that storm that came through. And that's where I was. I was visiting my mom and my sister. And um, it was great. It was a great time. And I had Samuel and Cindy, my uh, grandchildren, with me. We took that eight-hour drive that turned into 11 hours going down there. Because, uh, and my oldest daughter, Christy, and her friend Julie followed us down there because she wanted to see her grandma. She hadn't seen her in years and years. And so that was, this was a, a great reunion, great time. But I found out I cannot drive with somebody following me. I just, I can't do it. It's, it's, I feel like the police are behind me. And I'm always looking like, are they, are they there? Are they, you know, am I going too fast? If I lost them, and, and all that. That's because you're in, you can't you're incapable of being considerate to others. That has nothing to do with it. It is based on the fact I can't remember that they're there. I'll, I'll go. Like, oh yeah, she's following me. I, my my daughter's following me. I get caught up in what the kids are doing or listening to the radio or something. And it was, it's hard to do that. But it's you know, it's, it's like if you've ever had a policeman get on your tail and, and behind you, and you everything you do becomes you know, magnified, and you feel like, oh, I'm not going straight enough. I weaved over to that side and, you know, and that kind of thing. So it was, that was difficult, but, but we had to stop. That many people, you got to stop a lot. And, um, and getting gas and all that uh, that goes with that, and everybody wants to eat at different times. And and trying to make everybody go to the bathroom at the same time is very difficult. Uh, and make, especially when you have, there's like three grown women and the kids as well. But we uh, we got there. It was 11 hours later. I couldn't believe how long it took us to get there, and had a great. It was a great time though uh, during the week. And then when, as as it came to an end, I I started thinking, okay, if I leave Friday, we're still having ice, uh, ice ice is happening and ice ice not ice is uh, ice is happening, and I'm afraid to drive. I don't know how to drive on ice. Like, you know, we're from Houston. Never do that and so i was afraid of uh hydroplaning in dallas and fort worth because of the flooding that was going on there and then the ice getting from lubbock to to dallas anyway i was afraid so i told richard i was stuck stuck in lubbock and i will uh, be here today and but i left yesterday and it was great it, there was no no traffic out because the other thing about sunday night was i would add about two or three hours to the trip because of the traffic on 45 everybody coming back everybody waited to the last minute to leave to come back home from the holidays and uh i understand that but um anyway the kids missed a day of school i hated that but i it was a great driving experience yesterday because nobody was on the road it was fun so anyway that's where i had been and we had a, we had a great time samuel i mean uh, sam my husband sam before we left, he said, you know, it's going to get, be cold probably in Lubbock. So here I found this sweater and uh, it's a turtleneck sweater. And, I, you know, it is it is way too big for me. It just swallows me. But I think you could wear it. You know, you need to choose your words more wisely when you give somebody something. It was like, a, oh, thanks a lot. And I put it on and Cindy said, don't wear turtleneck sweater. <laughs> just don't do it. And I said, why? She said, because it, it, ha- it, it just pushes out all your chins. Oh, thanks. So I'm I'm going to burn that sweater. That's not going to happen. People need to, when they give somebody something, you know, and Cindy was just trying to be helpful. 
and I'll, I'll never wear a turtleneck ever, ever again. But anyway, the Texans won, and that was exciting. I was, you know, I didn't get to see the game, but my brother-in-law loves the Houston Texans. Um, he also has to root for the Dallas Cowboys, and you know how I feel about them. And they, um, I don't know what they did if they won their game, but uh, the Texans did win. And we're so proud of them, and uh, congratulations to those guys. But uh, I think that... It was a great idea for me to take the kids. A lot of times people say, don't take the kids to a nursing home where your mom is and all those old people that will just scare them and all that. But Samuel and Cindy have no fear of that. They walk in. Samuel makes friends with all the little ladies, and they just love him, and he shows them uh, the games that he he can play, and he talks to them about how good he is at stuff. And it's so exciting. It's like he finally has ears. Somebody's going to listen to him about what he's saying. And Cindy went and showed, you know, showed them all their bar- her Barbie dolls. And these women had so much fun in this nursing home with those kids there. It just brought so much life to them. And they just gave them so much attention. And the kids are not afraid. They are not afraid when the women start hollering at each other. And they would argue about everything. These, these late, little ladies, so cute. But they would argue about every little thing and go on and on and on about it. I would I think I may be on the verge of that. So anyway, um, it was good for them to be around there. I know if you have grandparents or you're the grandparent in a home where there's other children, uh, children around, it's good for those kids to see and especially to see the caring that happens from the, uh, from the older children. And like, um, they see me going and trying to help my, my mom. They see my sister who helps her every day and, and, you know, works with her and, and provides her comfort and company, and they see that. And when uh, Sam, my husband's father, was living with us, he lived he almost over a hundred, about a hundred years old in six months. And he, they got to see their grandpa take care of his dad, and with a lot of loving care. And that, and that helps children. It helps them to see, you know, like what you're supposed to do. And hopefully, they they see that, and they'll do that when you get old. I mean, Richard, like your parents. Have you seen them take care of all their kids and and their parents? And doesn't that make you understand how you should be whenever they get to the point where you got to take care of them? Does that help you? Say that again. <laughs> doesn't it help you watching your parents take how they've taken care of their parents, and then see how they take care of all their children? Does that help you understand how you should be when they get older? How you're going to take care of them? Yes. Thank you. Okay, that's why I like having uh, Richard here to support what I say. Uh, Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I see his dad. His dad is is seems like a really great. Well, that's why I uh, I support assisted suicide because if you don't want to take care of him, something's got to happen to him. I'm so glad. I'm so so glad your mother listens to the show so she can know how to. Identify and work with you. Uh, be afraid. Be very afraid. What's your mother's name? What's I don't. Name? I'm not giving my You're not personal give information out over the year. Okay, Mrs. Schischler. Uh, be afraid. Be very afraid. And keep. Uh, you no, know, our family has a very uh, old school way. Like we took care of my grandfather right when until he passed away uh, earlier this year. Right, and so it was just kind of like a joint effort. And, and he was part of the fam- family. Yeah, he was part he was of the family. Very respected. And I, I think that's good for all the kids and, and your nieces and nephews done, to see. I've definitely done the uh, janitorial duties. There you go. See? Now, didn't that bond you to your grandfather? Yeah. Okay. Well, well I mean, I, well, it also created this step in my mind is when you get to this point in life where he was. Right. Is it exactly where you want to be? And you couldn't really tell if you wanted to be there or not. Mm-hmm. And uh, the way he went was really fast. It was like one day he just wasn't doing well. And then... The doctor came out and saw him, and it's like, he's got like a week, and then that was it. And so I was like, man, that turned really fast. But when it comes down to taking care of your parents and being able to accommodate their needs, too, because my parents definitely accommodated their needs. They built a room for them. Right. And they had, I mean, that was nice. They had that luxury of being able to have him there and have his own room. So the bathroom was completely open and Mm -hmm. had bars everywhere and all that kind of stuff. So that's uh, great. But but in in your in your mind and in your nieces and nephew minds, watching that happen, watching the care that happens and not being afraid because this person is really old, 
that they don't have that fear walking into situations. It's so good for them. So, well, I, I think that's why the holidays good. are so important to a lot of older folks because a lot yeah. of things I've noticed, like my grandmother, I, I talk to her, try to talk to her at least once a week mm-hmm. and see her at least once or twice a month. But, you know, with the holidays coming, that's when, like, the only time you, some people get to see or talk. Right. Or, but then again, mm-hmm. I always find myself out like a sore thumb among my friends who don't do that because it's like I'm the weird one. Yeah. But that's then again, so sad. like, but then again, like, my entire family, all five brothers and sisters and extended family live in the Houston, general Houston area. So, like, it's, we're pretty close and we get to see yeah. each other quite often. So it's not, but that's, some families are not great. like that at all. At all. Well, you know, a lot of people are dealing with their, their in-laws and uh, grandma's, well, grandpa's. That, well, that's always one of my favorite moments is my brothers and sisters. Like I said, I have five brothers and sisters, and they get married. And when it comes down to the holidays, it's like you're just an afterthought when they come see you because they got to go to some <laughs> other party. I know. Or they, they have, have to, to – Their wives' in-laws. And the, I mean, their in-laws, and then they have to go to their wives' parents and it's just and they eat all this food and i'm like and I, I remember talking to my brother-in-law i was like how are you gonna survive because we ate all this food like at two o'clock mm-hmm. and i'm going to sleep but you're not you're driving you know an hour and a half two hours to go to this deal and you got to eat more and all this kind <laughs> right. of stuff so and it's also kind of intimidating because i know we i've had a couple uh sister and my sister-in-law for exact example only had one a season only child and basically lived with her mom so she didn't really have big big Christmases or big Thanksgivings. Yeah. And so you imagine coming to our to house yours, yeah. and like with – I think with my immediate family, I have 13 nieces and nephews. And then I have five brothers and sisters. All of them are going to be married. And so they all have a spouse. And then we have my parents. So there's a lot of us. See, for, that, how lucky you are for that. That's that's great. And uh, it just makes you the man that you are today. Nothing that you say is who you really are. It's – because he says a lot of things, guys, and you got to take it with just a grain of salt. Um, anyway, we will be back and right after this. But listen, did you? I have got evidence now that Rush Limbaugh must be listening to the Cindy Cochran Show, and I'm going to talk about that as soon as we get back. So don't go away. The Cindy Cochran Show brought to you by BK Myers Photography. The Cindy Cochran Show, real. Reality Radio. Did you know there are more than 790 abused and neglected children currently in foster care in Montgomery County? Will you help make a difference? I'm Allie Stevens with Costa Child Advocates of Montgomery County. We train and support volunteers to be the voice of children in the foster care system. Kids are moved from their home because of abuse and neglect. And we need volunteers just like you to advocate for these children. To learn more about becoming an advocate, please visit costaspeaksforkids.com. That's costaspeaksforkids.com. Hello, I'm Bonita DeRosa, Animal Control Officer for the City of Willis. We invite you to tune in to Lone Star Internet Radio every first and third Thursday of the month at 11 a.m. for the Willis Hour. On the first Thursday of the month, the Willis Hour will be covering upcoming events and news about the city. Join in the conversation with your city officials and other leaders in the community. On the third, we will be doing a recap of the last city council meeting. The mission of the city of Willis is to provide high quality services, accountability, and professional commitment to our citizens. We pledge to provide those who live, work, and visit our city an effective government that is open and responsive to the needs and values of the community. Again, we invite you to tune in on Lone Star Internet Radio every first and third Thursday of the month at 11 for the Willis Hour. At Jazzy Junk, volunteers reclaim, restore, and recycle. Jazzy Junk is a nonprofit resale storefront where you will discover wonderful, unique finds at very affordable prices on furniture, antiques, books, art, home decor, and more. When you shop Jazzy Junk, you support New Danville, a community for adults with developmental disabilities. We receive new donations daily, so plan a visit to Jazzy Junk today to find that perfect item or gift. Our motto is here today, gone 
today. So remember to hurry in and shop often for the best selection. Jazzy Junk is located in the outlets at Conroe on League Line Road and I-45 North. Call 936-441-4500 or visit our website, jazzyjunk.org. That's J-U-N-Q-U-E for more information and store hours. The Cindy Cochran Show. Even if these walls could talk, they couldn't get a word in edgewise. And we're back on the Cindy Cochran Show. It is December 1st. Oh, boy. Only. No. How can you say it? December 1st. And uh, it's so exciting. What an exciting month. It's going to go by so quickly. And I, I teased right before I came. I went off the air was uh, that I think I have proof now that Rush Limbaugh is listening to the Cindy Cochran show. And uh, here it goes. Monday, a week, Monday, a week ago, Monday. uh, I'm talking to Lieutenant Bob and we're talking about the Paris attack. So I, I, you know, we go through the Paris attack, how horrible that was. And I want to know how our police force here, you know, trains, discusses, strategizes about how, what will happen if we have something like that happen here. But I said, I want to tell you something that really bothered me. I'm watching all this coverage. And they say after this attack happened, they sent 20 bombers, 20 bombers to uh, the training center for terrorists that's right there near Paris and uh, to destroy it. Now, my question was, now that just, that was kind of, they, they were going, uh, talking about they've sent the planes off, they're going to do these bombing raids, and they're going to destroy the, uh, the training camp outside of Paris. And I'm going like, wait a minute. Did, did everybody just hear what I just heard? Um, that they went to destroy the training camp, these terrorists? It's been there. They know where it is. They know how to get there. And they haven't done that before now. What in the world is going on? That doesn't make sense one bit of sense to me and we got to find out about this i get in my car i I get in the car turn on i always listen at 11 o'clock to rush limbaugh he goes talks about the paris attack and then he says but here's the deal guys no one has brought this up that those bombers went to go destroy the training camp of these terrorists what is that all about why hasn't that been on the news? Why isn't that being covered? I don't understand this. This is, doesn't, doesn't make sense to me. They knew, and they hadn't had that destroyed before. Now, and a, a caller calls and goes, Rush, you're so brilliant. I never heard that. I, they said it. You're right. They said it, but I never thought about it that way. I can't believe they haven't said any more about it. So you see, you know, you're on the cutting edge with the Cindy Cochran show. Yes, you are. And so I just, uh, you know, Rush, you know, you deserve so much credit for so many things. But if you heard that on my show, please, you know, credit where credit's due. Anyway, um, I haven't had any, I haven't heard any follow up on, on that and why they hadn't, they allow that uh, training camp to go on anyway. So that we all should take a lesson from that. Anybody has any ideas? Like uh, we talked about, I mean, when we were doing the Mark and Cindy show, I said I'd seen the story where there is a training camp, training camp outside of Texas, and then I looked for the story again, couldn't find it. it was pulled, and I just it's, it's driven me crazy. Why haven't we heard more about that? So, if you guys know anything about that, please call in and let me know nine three six six four seven three seven seven six, and we won't use your name. Okay, I I'm sitting here and t- uh, talking to Richard, and lo and behold, I see this really sweet face and a little even sweeter face waving at us through the window because we we're right here on Main Street in downtown Conroe, and anybody can walk by look through here and see what's really going on behind the scenes of the Cindy Cochran show but lo and behold it was Brianna Donahoe yay Brianna Donahoe hi Brianna good morning hi do you want to introduce your guest oh my guest is my youngest child Braylon say hi Braylon hi I'm so glad she said hi Braylon (laughs) Braylon you know who I am you see me at church don't you Uh Uh uh-huh and I'm always talking to your mommy right Uh uh-huh we just talk and talk and talk, and you can never get a word in edgewise, right? That's, That's never right. her She's problem. No. no, she knows how to talk. Yeah. So what are you doing here this morning? What are y'all doing? 
I just going to go to school because I'm feeling much better. On the last day of school, I was not being so better because I was sick. You were sick on the she last was, day of school well, before the holidays? Yesterday. No, she oh. was sick yesterday. Oh, yesterday you were yeah. sick. And, and today? so today mommy said, you can stay with me and I'll take you to school if you're feeling better. Oh. So we had to go up to the church because we left our medicine bag at church on uh-oh, Sunday. Uh-oh, uh-oh. And so we said, let's go stop by and see Miss Cindy. Yes, I'm so glad that you did. Brianna Donahoe is our uh, go-to person for the fantasy football, for... Um, any, anything of, of Bravo like, related. Anything Bravo related because <laughs> we love Bravo. And I was I was thinking about you this morning because I was looking at the reunion from Below the Deck. Mm-hmm. And that was a good first so reunion. Ridiculous. I can't wait till that second one. This is going to be fun. Um, but it was it was good. It was a good uh, reunion. If okay, anybody well, wants don't to tell me up. about it because we moved you this haven't... weekend and I have everything's <gasps> DVR'd and I haven't watched it. <laughs> Okay, rats, and who am I going to talk to? Well, give me, give me like 24 hours Thank okay. you. to catch it. Don't ever watch it. <laughs> Nobody ever watches that. Yeah, Richard. Um, everybody loves that. It's so intriguing. And if you just, li- if you'd give it just one chance, you'd be sucked in. And I want to, want to watch it. Uh, okay, so Mindless we won't, TV. it's wonderful. We it's won't wonderful. talk about that, but you're, I really want to watch it. You watch it too? Who's your favorite person on Below Deck? I love uh, I love the guy when he just does something to mean to people. The, which one is that, Captain? Do you like Captain Lee? He's you like Captain favorite. Lee? Mm-hmm. Captain Lee is cute. He's old, <laughs> but he's cute, right? Mm-hmm. It's okay to be old as long as you're cute. Yeah, there you go, Braylon. You are so cute. We may have to have you on a, as a co-host one time. Um, mm-hmm. So, did um, <laughs> you didn't get the tickets? <laughs> I did, I had the tickets for you, Cindy, and I'm leaving. I'm thinking I gotta put these right here so that you can get these tickets. And uh, okay. don't tell Richard because <coughs> you're telling him right now. Don't don't tell him because uh, he'll roll his eyes and I've, do all kinds of things. You can feel it things. through the radio station. Yeah, did you hear? She said you can feel the roll of your eyes at me whenever you think I've done something wrong, Richard. Um, and he doesn't mind keeping that. Not keeping a secret. No. Dude. So no. And and I know that his mother would never allow him to do things like that. I know she meant for him to be respectful, especially to your elders. Well, he's not saying it to you. He's just rolling his eyes at you. It, yeah. it could be much worse. I think yeah, it is I because I, I look out the window so I don't have to see him. I try to hold my my hand like that. So I, I just, just roll my eyes. Uh, my mom and my sister. If I just roll my eyes, I just. Be so lately if I roll my eyes. Do you get in trouble if you roll your eyes? Try again. Yes, (laughs) ma'am. There you go. She is, I mean, most well-behaved. She listens to everything her mother says and is so respectful. Don't shake your head, Brianna. No, she's so good. And your mom is so smart. She knows about so many different things. Uh I love it. Well, uh, are you in pre-K or are you in kindergarten pre-k you're in pre-k you're smart for pre-k you mm-hmm. she's mm-hmm. good because you that's because you hang around all those old kids mm-hmm. right uh-huh because i just go in pre-k to learn stuff and who's your teacher in pre-k miss carolyn and what school do you go to oak ridge elementary oak ridge elementary <laughs> i like got that that is great i am so happy that you're here so do you know, um, have you ever listened to the show before? Have you listened to my show before? I know your mommy listens every day. But I, do you listen? I listen every day, but I don't know how to song to my word. So I just know the songs. Uh-huh. Only I know the songs to my sister's music. Oh, does she listen to uh, 96.5? No, Is right it, now she's talking about the Christmas musical that oh, they're oh, going to yes. do at Conroe. Right. And uh, that's going to be December the... That's Sunday. This Sunday. Mm-hmm. At and 4 o'clock. They didn't rehearse this past Sunday, did they? No. Thank goodness, because I wasn't here. And um, and we're doing Silent Night and Sign Language with uh, all the kids. And so uh, it's going to be amazing. It that's is. the opening act is Silent Night. 
and you'll you'll get to have me teach you sign language uh, in a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she's okay. Since and, uh, I just knew that I just do something. Oh wait a minute! Wait, I'm sorry. So sorry to uh, to interrupt. Of course, she would interrupt a child. <laughs> but we. <laughs> I knew that sounded bad, so I better say, I'm so sorry. But we have a phone call, and we everything stops when we have a phone call. Yes, caller, what is your name, and what would you like to talk about? <laughs> Who is that? Oh, no. You know, you sound a lot like a guy that I knew as Santa Claus. Is this Santa Claus? Bill, I'd like to ask your little child friend there, what would she like for Christmas? <laughs> and I'll hang up to hear her answer. <laughs> well, thank you, Santa, for calling in. He's real busy right now, but he wants to know what you want for Christmas, Braylon. I I want to get new Barbies. You want to get new Barbies? Are you being... Wait a minute. Are you throwing away your old Barbies, just tossing them aside? I don't like my old Barbies because I don't know where all my clothes are to put... To, <laughs> get dressed <laughs> so we can't ask for new clothes for our barbies we just have to ask for all new barbies what is the universal problem with little girls and their barbies and them immediately being disrobed and nobody can find their I don't, clothes i don't know the I same mean, thing with baby dolls yeah it's just it, it i mean it looks kind of scary when you walk in there and there's all these naked barbies what did mommy do so your barbies wouldn't be naked anymore if i just put clothes on i can make them get dressed faster mm-hmm. and gooder i i I'm, i drew bathing suits on all of our barbies that's what we because have that's what we have that's so weird yeah we've got bathing suits on them and and everybody's you know like anatomically correct so we gotta cover that up uh okay we're gonna be right back there nobody go away we've still got uh we have so much to talk about so many things going on and we're gonna you know what I found out today? I found out how much Harrison Ford was paid for the first Star Wars. And I'm going to let you know about that when we come back. The Cindy Cochran Show. Don't go away. The Cindy Cochran Show. The first daily talk show serving Montgomery County. Have a legal question? Are you a resident of Montgomery County? Call 281-645-6344 to talk to a volunteer attorney from the Woodlands Bar Association. We answer the phones on the first Monday of every month at 281-645-6344 from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. to provide general legal information and information about legal resources to Montgomery County residents. Lone Star Internet Radio is now bringing you the weekly business hour show each Monday morning at 11 a.m. My name is Rick Schistler and I will be your host. Each week we will be bringing you local, area, and national business news that you can use. The program will also feature an interview with a local or national business person who will share their own experiences, successes, and failures in operating their businesses. Our show is for anyone who already owns a business, whether they work solo or have employees and for those who are thinking about starting their own businesses. A bit of information about myself. Again, my name is Rick Schisler, and I am a Silver Fox advisor who has over 40 years experience as a serial entrepreneur. As a part of our show, I will offer some advice and encouragement on our monthly topic, and I will take your questions by email at rschisler at silverfox.org or call into the station at 936 647 3776. See you on the radio Monday at 11 a.m. for the weekly business hour. In a world where everyone with a smartphone is a photographer, unique images still stand out in local newspapers, magazines, and on the internet. Writer and photographer Brad Meyer has gained a reputation for innovation and quality, specializing in an editorial approach to portraits and event photography. For information, visit bkmeyer.com or call 281-221-4812. The East Texas Dream Center is in need of your help. We are a nonprofit Christian organization that houses women and children who are trying to get their lives back after being homeless, abused, or addicted. We are conveniently located at 301 South 1st Street, Conroe, Texas, 77301, right here in Montgomery County. 
Our needs are financial and every needs of gasoline, cleaning supplies, laundry soap, Lysol, and whatever else God puts in your heart. To help our ladies and children, please consider a donation. You may visit our website at www.easttexasdreamcenter.org. Again, so you don't forget, it's www.easttexasdreamcenter.org. Donations are tax deductible. Remember what Jesus said, with God, nothing is impossible. The Cindy Cochran Show. You ain't heard nothing yet. You're listening to The Cindy Cochran Show, and the countdown begins. No, not to Christmas, but to Star Wars. November, I mean, December the 18th. <laughs> you thought I was going to say the wrong date. Yeah, no, December the 18th, uh, Star Wars. And that is the... Um, the force what was the force do the force continues or the force awakens the force awakens okay all right so we got that down you, but you know i want to tell you something i found oh, right i found the other day what did you find? about star wars there's this theory going around how jar jar binks is the uh, real sith lord oh of of the entire deal and this guy makes a video like if your listeners are listening go online to youtube type in jar jar binks like sith lord theory and it is hilarious because it's true, but in their context. So it's just – In is, their own world. I mean nobody would – I mean you have to really study this stuff hard. Well, they back it up because they they show you the scenes where they're talking about, and especially his <laughs> movements and the way he handles situations because it's like it, – it is it, – looking at it from their perspective, it could be true. That is very disappointing. If Jar Jar and is the, the, he's the main. He's the the baddest of the bad. What he says, "How can how can he be? We can't even understand." Well, that would his, destroy the franchise. For his, me. his biggest <laughs> his biggest weapon was his, I guess, his stupidity. Because mm-hmm. everyone thought he was stupid, so he'd never be capable of controlling mm-hmm. anything. But what's funny is if you look at the storyline, he's the one that gave Senator Palpatine full control oh. of the Senate. He's the one that convinced Padme Yay. of giving him control, and he also persuaded the Jedi to go help basically set in motion all the events. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's the one that started everything, pretty much. Okay, but did you know how much Harrison Ford got paid for doing the first Star Wars? No, how much did he get oh, paid? I would say <laughs> under 100000 okay. are, are we doing prices Right rules? <laughs> Yes. You're wrong. One dollar. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're all wrong. You'll never guess. I didn't You'll pay You'll never him. guess what it is. No, uh, after he had done American Graffiti, mm-hmm. the producer of that tricked him into coming to the auditions that they were holding for Star Wars, this new movie coming out. And he said, if you'll just read the part of Han Solo, just read that part to help the people auditioning for it. He said, that would be great. And so he said, oh, okay, all right, I will. And... Um, so he reads for it, and then after the auditions are over, they go to him and ask him, would you play Han Solo? We want you for Han Solo. And he goes, uh, how much? And uh, he said, they said, we're paying him 1000 a week. And he goes, what? And, uh, but he said, I, they talked me into it and said, 1000 a week um, will take long or whatever. And this is, uh, you know, this, because this is Lucas, Lucas, this is like his first real big, you know, rodeo so he wasn't really sure but well, he, he said did okay. american graffiti huh he did american graffiti i know but, but it this hadn't like, come out yet yeah this is like big this is like the big sh- you know that he's like going to the big show and and star wars is a huge jump from american graffiti and what was funny was but they american didn't graffiti, know that when they were taping it not no not at all and, and american graffiti he has such a small part in it but it it really got everybody looking at him and so they thought that was good did you like American Graffiti? Yeah. Okay. How many times have you seen it? <laughs> one time. I don't believe okay. it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> so so they told him uh, a thousand a week, and he thought, no, no way, that's, that's just too too little. But they talked him into it, and he was glad that he did. But during the making of the show, y'all heard about he broke his leg because one of the doors in the in the it's aircraft. Spaceship. What's the aircraft called? There's no, the Millennium, the what, Millennium Falcon. Yeah, Millennium Falcon. Uh, the door came down and wasn't supposed to, and it broke his right leg. After he 
started healing from that. He broke the other leg. So he, he's been through a lot. But he, he looked old. really good. He's, he looked really good, though. And, <laughs> and Steven Spiel, Spielberg has said he wants to do another Indiana Jones before he turns 80. That's his... Okay, uh, but, you know, the Indiana Jones franchise, you know, Sean Connery was in several of those. Movies. Yes, right. He made right. the movie. They were they were trying to to bol- you know bolster that and and he was really good he was He's good great. in that he brought so much as ah, Indiana's dad yes as his dad was, he was that was a great. Uh, casting move mm-hmm. that was really good so so yeah he could do that anyway he's he wants although, to do it but he's waiting for the script he said although shia labeouf is his son in the movie and he's mm-hmm. weird yeah in real life so yeah. i don't know how that would work well maybe they'll kill off the ki- kid <laughs> you know who, who knows but uh i'll never go up against you richard about star wars ever but i, I just didn't know if well, you knew that part i'm just afraid that they're going to come out with these movies like every eight months and so the whole magic isn't going to be it's gonna it's, it's going to be too concentrated and well, they're going to take a lot of liberties. Well, what happens is he said some someone asked him the question, you know, like are you the same wise guy? And he said, "Well, I'm still the same guy, but I'm more complex and I have more there's more emotional, there's more emotional side to Hans this time." So the love interest, I guess, is there. You see him hugging Leia. Leia, yeah. And she doesn't look good. And Mark Hamill uh, does not look good. No, and see that's why I think they just showed his hand. That maybe we always see his because <laughs> <laughs> these guys are thinking thirty years later I'm gonna you know they're, I'm still gonna be doing this. No way I'm gonna be doing Shakespeare in the park. But uh, so I don't know if they're gonna do it those guys and how they're used. But he did see that he said he saw the movie. He was very excited about the movie. So Braylon, did you see the Good Dinosaur yet? No, not yet. When are you gonna see it? I'm going to see it at... Say, so probably this weekend. We're waiting on Layla. We Probably this weekend, but I'm waiting on Layla this weekend. Okay. And Layla's grandma, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. That's always good. And your grandma's... She's got a great name because she has the same name as me. Uh, Cindy. Because she is Cindy, so she has the same name like me. So uh, my name is Brenda Dunhoe, and my mom's name is Brianna, and... My mom's mom's name is her name is Cindy Dunahoe. Yeah, like the jewelers. So that's what I always remember it from that. <laughs> but we are not the jewelers. <laughs> you're, not, no, you're not. You're not related nope. to the nope. jewelers. Oh, okay. They spell nope. it different. Okay, fine, fine. Uh, there's some. There's a lot of things going on at Christmas. A lot of things going on around this area right here. And if you've noticed, I'm sorry, I got away from Mike. Uh, if you've noticed that a lot of the, <sighs> you walk down Main Street and you see all these windows that have the Christmas decorations things. in them, mm-hmm. and they're, and people are supposed to be uh, voting on them. So if you want to vote on a window, if you if you will imagine, now I'm going to pretend like you've just come to a, uh, a town home. Um, you know, seminars where they bring you in, mm-hmm. share, share, timeshares, the timeshares, time time yeah. Uh, so if you'll, if you'll vote on this window, and let me tell you what it's going to look like. <laughs> Just imagine, if you will, that this window is going to be totally decorated in garland and uh, lights. There's this lacking and all. stuff. Well, you have to use your imagination, and then that way... <laughs> your mic is off uh so one day that'll happen but if you'll look at like if you've seen the Crichton theater down there and there everybody else looks really great really wonderful and Yours so just we're asking because we're radio and you're we're to be heard and not seen <laughs> is that he's gonna play christmas music out there and that's our decoration don't you think it's a good idea i think it's a great idea yeah yeah well i was thinking of printing out some letters on the on the blinds when we close it says Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. Oh, that would I totally work. I love that. That would totally work. That's what, well, in red and green. But in reality, we're waiting. There was a, a backlog of canned snow. Gotcha. And I'm waiting. It should be delivered on the 4th. So. And where did that line come from? You filthy animals. Home Alone. I was asking. I knew she you She hasn't seen that movie yet. I don't oh, feel okay. like she's old enough to watch it yet. For to really alone? be funny. To be funny for to her? Yeah. It might just frighten her and think, would mom do that to me? Would she leave me and not... not 
I feel like what it would do, depending on the age, is just kind of give them some ideas. Way bad ideas, mm-hmm. right? So like you'd be so going I feel to like their, I need to give her a couple of years before I like trick wires those. and all that kind of stuff around your house because that like, would be her. Did you see Donald Trump? That he was in the second one, the okay. Home Alone two. Yes. I love Donald Trump. I know you do. And and I really have (laughs) problems with that. You you have problems with me loving Donald Trump? No, you can love him all you want to. I just have problems if if he is elected president. I just, (laughs) I may have to move countries. Oh, no, 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 no. No, you will. This will be the most entertaining four years of your life. Because, no, he's he's going to, he's going to gather around him. People much smarter than he is. That's how brilliant he but is. But that's be everybody much smarter. on the planet. That's exactly right. He's going to get, bring people together <laughs> to overcome his inadequacies for for speaking, and he'll throw he'll send in pinch hitters. And I'm hoping that when he when he has to debate Hillary Clinton, he just brings Carly I'm Fiorina. Not, I'm not really her impressed with her either. She could not be president. I'd no. be okay with that too. Somebody that that sent out now they have a count of a, of 999 emails that were classified Mm -hmm. and she says she never knowingly sent anything that was a classified information if she doesn't know that and she the secretary of state i wouldn't do that so uh so she doesn't have a lot to to deal with there but if carly fiorina (laughs) came out and debated her that would be the most awesome debate because she can get away with things that the guys can't get exactly you know exactly that would be an entertaining debate just the two of them yeah when donald trump calls out the anchor saying she must have been on her period because the way she was acting but he, he can't do that that but makes Carly me want to punch him Fiori- in the face that's, that's right. why Carly i don't like Fiorina him could have done that but he said that's he just said he never said that it was about her period about uh, uh megan kelly <laughs> that was i was sitting there watching that and i went what he just say? What no, Donald? You didn't say that. You didn't say that. No, because that's yeah. gonna they're gonna kill you. But it didn't matter. His rating, his poll numbers still went up. So I don't know what could I don't know what could hurt him. I want to know who now, they're polling. Like you know, for, that's, like Braylon's no, pre K class. Is that who they're polling? No, these are ABC, NBC. Every, I don't, all the, I don't all the polling it. data shows that he's still up. So it's he can't do anything wrong. And now he's he. It looks but like he was making fun me. of a. Of That's a person scary to me. who was handicapped, and uh, so I, I, I don't know what he could actually do to, you know, to break this up. But Rubio looks like he's coming along. Cruz is really, you know, they've got they've got some people in there that would say things that I just, yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, you're good, mm-hmm. and you can put the sentences together. But Donald is so much more fun to listen to. I'm sorry, he is, and what he says, and and he, we know that he can build a tower we know that he can put the people together to do things and he's got a lot of women that work for him which he's smart about that mm-hmm. so uh, you know you can't just you can't discount him i mean everybody I, did the same you know thing what? to reagan i feel like he has done a great thing for politics because people are watching politics Amen, that have never brother. ever ever a- followed politics before he's Amen, done great brother. for that okay but so. i just really struggle with that being the best decision for our country well as our well, president, I mean, everyone thought Ronald Reagan was a joke. That's exactly because he was an actor. I got it. So. And they were going to start running the you know ads against him with the monkey. You know that. He, I, I'm just surprised no one has dirt on Donald Trump. I'm sure they know, do. He's uh, paid them off. Yeah. Well, no, even Hello? if he paid them off, like that, because he's going in a position of power, not just for money, but just right. for power, world, for, world yeah. power. So. But if he was going to be, I can see something popping up. But if he was going to be bribed, but it's not real yet. Like when he is nominated that's when all the mud slinging will moment. start yeah yeah, yeah. It'll, it's gonna be so entertaining it's gonna be great and i'm just so glad that really god's in charge in the, in the meantime so um, you're telling me the president is a joke and entertaining no it's entertaining how this is all gonna go down it's, it's entertaining because he's gonna lower the quality of what that position represents well let's just talk about when we come back let's talk you about think what it's a joke what so it's the president working. What the president now is doing, instead of fighting ISIS, what we're fighting, ISIS, 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 uh, what we're fighting is the climate change. So here we go. We're going to talk about that when we get back. You're listening to the Cindy Cochran Show. Don't go away. We have more fun things to talk about. Who now has another first? The Cindy Cochran Show. Mornings at 10 a.m. on IRLoneStar.com. Hello, Montgomery County. I'm Rachel Baldwin with Special Olympics Texas Area 6. Are you a fan of courage? Are you a fan of determination? Are you a fan of acceptance, grace, and skill? 
then you're already a fan of Special Olympics. Make it official. Volunteer, coach, and or compete and be a fan of dignity and acceptance. The dedication of our Special Olympic Texas volunteers provides mainstreaming experiences for athletes with intellectual disabilities. You will touch the heart of another person and it will move you in a meaningful way that lifts the spirit. Please visit the Heart of East Texas Area 6 webpage at www.sotx.org. Also, like us on Facebook to be a fan and be part of Special Olympics Texas. Hey, this is Cindy Cochran, and now Conroe can boast of another first. The first morning live talk show, 10 to 11 a.m., Monday through Friday, right here on Lone Star Internet Radio, coming straight out of the fabulous downtown Conroe, Texas. Be the coolest guy at the water cooler or the most informed break room dweller by listening to the fun side of the news, local, national, infinity, and beyond. The Cindy Cochran Show, you ain't heard nothing yet. In a world where everyone with a smartphone is a photographer, unique images still stand out in local newspapers, magazines, and on the Internet. Writer and photographer Brad Meyer has gained a reputation for innovation and quality, specializing in an editorial approach to portraits and event photography. For information, visit bkmeyer.com or call 281-221-4812. Are you interested in learning more about preparing quick, healthy, and safe meals for your family? Would you like to spend time with others learning tips and tricks along with practicing and tasting nutritious food? If so, the On the Road to Healthy Living Mobile Cooking School is for you. Call Amy Ressler at Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service at 936-539-7825 to find a class near you or volunteer to host a class. The Cindy Cochran Show. Even if these walls could talk, they couldn't get a word in edgewise. And we're back on the Cindy Cochran Show, being brought to you by BK Myers Photography. Just go to my website and look at the pictures of the pictures that we take during the, you know. You, like you have a have, website? I was just to say, when did you get a website? Oh, maybe I misspoke. Maybe I meant Facebook. I was trying to be, like, in the know. I'm on Facebook. Go to the Cindy Cochran Show and just look at the pictures I've taken in front of our grand uh, Texas flag and and see what those pictures look like and then look and see what my picture looks like on the ad for the Cindy Cochran show and BK Myers photography did that magical transformation that isn't a picture that I took you know 20 years ago it's one that I took just a month ago but what he can do to a picture you wouldn't be able to tell you because I don't know it. it's wonderful but listen guys you know chamber chat is coming up and uh, Terry Jaggers is going to be on and just you know the whole group and the crowd and they've crowded around the outside of the window and they're waving and they're just a fun group I don't care what you say about chamber people this these guys are fun people and you know you're going to be so informed so much more informed than you are listening to this <laughs> that's not true yeah, I really wanted to add a segment where we quiz you about just general things <laughs> That would be fun. I think totally, that would be fun. totally ruined the whole reputation of this. No, if, if you did that, that would be funny. Because, you know, I, I'm telling everybody, every time I make a statement of anything, I have Richard over there fact checking me. Fact. fact. Yeah, che- not fat. fat not fat. Fact checking me. And so uh, you uh, you got to know that everything I say is truism. Just like. Hey, what, th- there's my canned snow. Uh oh. You got canned snow. It delivered snow. early. Man. Come on in. You are so cute. Come on in. Look, you, you, why aren't you wearing your shorts? You, this is a UPS it's guy. outside. Hello. <laughs> but he's wearing his dimple. Look how cute. Look how cute he is. This is our DPS guy. DPS. Our UPS guy. UPS guy, guy is coming in to <laughs> <laughs> deliver canned snow. <laughs> I hope that's what that is. That's what he said it is. Is canned from snow. Amazon. It could be anything. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> that was fun. He's so cute. Um, so, is it? Is it really canned snow? 
Good grief. Look at the knife he takes to open it up. This it's is a pocket s- knife. He's in yeah, Texas. He's delivering oh. on, on the air. Look, it's can snow. Yay. Okay, so we may be in the running for the best decorated window. Well, you'll uh, definitely have oh, snow. Our lone star. And I don't see that the, the chamber people brought anything to decorate with. So let's, you know, you guys are all about that. You know, it's all, it's, it's, it's the display. Display is everything, right? Okay. <laughs> Listen, uh, so apparently uh, our President Obama... Uh, went before the world and said that this this is a great way to fight terrorism is to show them how we can bring the country together to fight global I mean uh, climate change. Well, does he know you can get snow in cans now? Well, see, he's he better be that would watching. help out, right? That would help a yeah. lot. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just gotta shake it really well. That's, Let's just burn the it. ozone hole we, with the yeah. aerosol can of snow. <laughs> what yeah. happens if you shot this? So all these leaders of the country went over there on their big jets and stuff and did a big old footprint there, and I don't know why they did that. They should have all walked or rode horses there and, and sh- proved everybody that we will not make any kind of a carbon footprint ever again. So anyway, uh, but uh, I, I hope that he doesn't think that's distracted us from somebody better get an idea how to contain, really contain the real terrorist. And uh, it's not it's not in this room here. You know, we're thinking, we, you know, we do have think tanks here. And we uh, brought in our best thinker right here, Braylon Donahoe. Tell me, Braylon, what is your what does your T-shirt say? I, it says that I listen to my heart. It says and follow your heart. And who is in your heart? God. That's, I love, she said God, just Duh. like the preachers say. And God's in there, and that's right. We should be following our heart, and we, but first of all, we put God in our heart, and then we follow it, right? That's what we're going to do? Yep. And we always tell the truth, right? Because I just follow my heart. To listen to what my mom says and what my heart says, too. I love that. Braylon, you are brilliant. I think you've brought the best message to the show today, is that we needed to do that. And we always want to be good, first of all, because God wants us to be good. And then second of all, because Santa wants us to be good to get all of our presents. And then third, your parents, right? Yeah. yeah in that order. <laughs> I only got this. You, she's got it. She got you. Got it. Okay, you guys. Thank you, Bri- Brianna. Thank you so much for just stopping by. Say anytime. And Braylon, anytime. Anytime, Braylon. You're welcome here anytime because we've got to make way for chamber chat because you just never know what they're going to be chatting about. They're chatty Cathy's. Do you know what chatty Cathy is? Yeah. Okay. So they are. They're going to be coming up uh, right after this. You guys sit right where you are. Cuddle up with that uh, computer. Get a hot cup of co- coffee or cocoa or whatever you want. Or some toffee. Yeah, <laughs> or toffee. Some toffee. Get some toffee. Uh, anyway, you guys, thank you for joining us. You've been listening to the Cindy Cochran Show, and we will be here every morning this week. And so come back and see us. Uh, we'll uh, talk to you real soon. Have a great day. God loves you. God's got this. And we'll see ya. Thank you for listening. Hope you enjoy the show. Any comments, suggestions of topics, email me at the Cindy Cochran Show at gmail.com. Also, check out my Facebook page, The Cindy Cochran Show. Join me live Monday through Friday. See ya.